Hey, this is Eric Bond with another Thoughtful Thursday where we answer questions to help you and your community become a reconciling community. My name is David Bailey. And I'm Elena Aronson. And our question today is, what is the history of the church in regards to its involvement in the fight against racial injustice? And that's such a great question. <laughs> it is. It's not a pretty one to look at, to be honest. If we look at the history of the church, uh, all over the world, not just America included, there's a million examples of things that we could name where we've made major mistakes, been on the side of oppressive practices, or just in complicit in uh, oppressive things or things that have marginalized other people. And uh, this question is oriented towards the American context about racial injustice. And just looking at that, we have plenty of things that we could say are like bad news. Uh, it's clear that we've been either complicit in or supportive of oppressive practices in our country, starting even before this country was founded, where we discovered this land through the doctrine of discovery that said we can own land that's not inhabited by Christians. And that was because of a diminished understanding of the Imago Dei and the people that lived originally on our land. And then obviously we formed our economy through slave labor. And it's incredible to look at even the slave Bibles that were created during that time that took out certain portions of the text to reinforce a message of subservience. And then of course we've seen um, the forced segregation in churches that happened over time that we still have the, the residue of and are continuing to deal with. Yeah. There's plenty of examples um, in our history but I would say today we still see that the American church too often sees this as a partisan political issue rather than an issue that we should care about because of our faith. And there's a lot of work that needs to take place to change that narrative. But David, do you have any good news for us? Yeah, I mean, I mean, when, when you listen, you listed out like that, Elaine, I'm like, man, why, why should you want to be a Christian? <laughs> <laughs> Other people feel that way. And I think that's a legitimate question, right? Like, that's a legitimate question. But I think, like, you know, particularly for me as a Black person, a person of color, right, who has been on the, the negative side of it, why would I be a Christian? And, like, why would um, that, like, am I being duped? You know, mm -hmm. like, that's a that's a legitimate question to, to be asked. And um, for me, um, as I've looked at the history and um, I've kind of reconciled these things with the scriptures, uh, one of the things that I, you know, Elena alluded to, um, one of the things I like about the sacred text of the Bible and the Christian understanding is, is that there's only one hero in the Bible, and that's God. Mm -hmm. Like, like even the people of God uh, were folks that were like, would mess up and would do things, and, and like some of the even the 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 old saints of faith uh, who are like examples. They're not examples because they were perfect. They were imperfect people, but they would like find a way back to God and to repent. And I think that's kind of the story, right? Like the story of like the Bible is also the story of humanity, that there are bad examples and there are good examples. And what we see in the scripture, like from the very, very first book, is that what Elena said, Imago Dei, we're all made in the image of God. And so because of that, you know, there are um, people who have compromised the faith that have um, said some people aren't true image bearers and other people and some people are animals and other people have the right to have dominion and, and other people that don't have the right to dominion but that's not what the scripture says and there have been people like Quakers uh, who 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 uh, or Anabaptists who have said like hey we uh, need to be faithful to what the scripture says that all people are made in the image and likeness of God and have equal value mm -hmm. uh, there are people who supported the Underground Railroad there were folks after the Civil War and, and when slavery was abolished, to say like, "Hey, I want to, um, uh, I want to uh, educate African Americans and, and help help them to to be empowered, to make a living, and to to not be a slave anymore." Uh, there were people who have been hospitable to immigrants because the Bible speaks from Genesis all the way through through uh, uh, the, the end of the book towards Revelation about uh, um, loving and caring for immigrants and people who. Are strangers in the land so 
you know, there, there is a checkered history, but there's a lot of good news because there have been people that have, have looked at that text and said, hey, this is what God's heart is for uh, God's people and, uh, uh, and God's creation. And there's a, a, a long history of folks who have been faithful to that, a remnant who's been faithful to that also. That's good. It's good to remember that alternative history. Well, maybe not alternative, but things that were happening at the same time that do speak to the truth of what we see in the biblical text that God cares about these issues and we were designed to be working towards the Imago Dei and everyone, everyone being able to see that and um, there were people that have been doing that. And then I think the final good news I would share is that like the church has an opportunity to act as a foretaste of the kingdom of God and yep. what we will do can either present a really compelling witness to the world or we can yeah. give a witness that continues to create disgust and distrust. And my prayer is that the church starts to create a more compelling witness. Yeah, amen to that. And uh, that's kind of why we do what we do, right? We want to help the church to be a more compelling witness. So we can look at the past and we can learn, um, but we, we can write the future. Uh, we can write like what we're going to do today. So when people look at us uh, in the future, they'd be like, you know what? There's a group of people who, uh, Christians who decided to do the right thing for their generation. Thank you for watching the Thoughtful Thursday video. Please leave questions or comments in the comment area below. Take a moment and share this with a friend and hit subscribe so that you can get the Thoughtful Thursday question each week.